So, uh, hello everybody, and I would uh, like to tell you something hopefully interesting about automatic monitoring, analyzing, and visualizing uh, open data. And uh, to start, we all know that we have more and more uh, open data. And they are even available in machine-friendly, machine-readable formats. At least some of them are. But even if they are available, uh, there are st st still some questions to resolve. How can we automatically monitor updates in the open uh, data sets? How can we easily reproduce our analysis on such updated data sets? How can we quickly prototype and deploy web applications that are interactive and so attractive for end users, uh, that can analyze and visualize data collected from different sources, and that can promote data-driven knowledge in uh, our society and target groups. So let me uh, show you some uh, exemplary, very simple exemplary case study uh, in which uh, we assume that we need to build some uh, a simple interactive website with responsive template that works also on mobile, mobile devices and uh, that reports and visualizes basic uh, facts about the unemployment rate in Poland and different administration units. And in this way, we would like to mimic some functionality of the project Stratec, uh, which, by the way, wasn't a cheap project to uh, implement. And uh, uh, Open Data Institute, ODI, promotes uh, graph data format as the most useful and suitable format for open data, but we still have to work with data that are not available through, uh, through any kind of application programming interfaces, that are, uh, that, uh, data that are in text files but not in tidy CSV formats, that are difficult to match with uh, other data sets, that have uh, no uh, meta description of a very uh, sparse one. And in our case study, we can obtain some data about uh, unemployment rate from local data banks, official data service uh, of Central Statistical Office of Poland, but only by manually exporting them into uh, CSV files or into the proprietary format XLS. So we need another data set in the shapefile format to plot maps of Poland with different administration uh, units. And uh, what is interesting, those data were not uh, even open before July last year. Now uh, uh, the, those data are open, but can only be pulled from the website as a one big zip archive. So, okay, uh, we can obtain those data, but we have some still uh, problems to uh, resolve. So we have data frames uh, in CSV files that are not tidy, that are mixed with a uh, metadata description. We have different IT systems uh, of administration units, TERIC versus NTS. We have different labeling of administration units. I don't really know why. Uh, we have some very informative variable names in data slots like GPT, KODGE. You need to guess what it means, because I don't know. Uh, in, because all that uh, automatic monitoring of data updates in such data sets are very hard to implement, very hard to follow. So, uh, uh, fortunately we have some data uh, source alternatives, and one of uh, these uh, data source alternatives is the official central repository of public information. But there, is, uh, there are no data from central statistical office. There are some other data sets, but uh, in formats like PDF or DOC. Uh, fortunately, and it's not a joke now, uh, we have uh, projects like uh, Open Poland Document. It's a project of Telnite. Telnite is an IT uh, software house from Szczecin. Uh, and in this project, we have all data sets from Data Local Bank available for, 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 uh, through uh, free uh, application programming interface in JSON format, so very uh, machine-readable, uh, machine friendly formats, and also with the use uh, of Open Poland Air Package. So the guys from Szczecin did something that uh, central, official central uh, statistical office of Poland uh, couldn't have done uh, so far. Uh, so what about uh, data analytics? Everyone knows that proprietary statistical software uh, generates uh, high costs, but not everyone knows that implementation of new statistical methods 
In proprietary statistical packages takes about, any guesses? Five years. <laughs> uh, and uh, moreover, not, like, not long ago, for different steps of data analysis, we needed to use different tools and languages. Right? There are one language for importing and man manipulating data, one for statistic and graphics, one for working with fun the function outputs, and so on. But and today we only need one language. And uh, Tim would probably recommend you uh, a Python, but I will uh, recommend you uh, uh, the R language. The R language is the most powerful statistical computing language of the time, said Norman Nee. And as the Norman Nee was a developer of one of the most popular commercial statistical package, uh, I think uh, he was probably knew what he was saying. So uh, R has uh, many packages with many functions that we can use. Uh, the L new methods are implemented uh, in no time, which is much less than those five years. And especially using collaborative platforms like GitHub, which was mentioned uh, here before. And uh, it's free of charge, also uh, for uh, uh, commercial use. So let's use R. Uh, but what about interactive visualization? And again, not long, ago, not long ago, we needed different tools and programming languages to build interactive uh, applications. HTML, HTML5, PHP, MySQL, and so on and so on. And today, we probably still need them. And it always helps to know those technologies uh, because we want to uh, customize our uh, web applications. But we can utilize them directly by programming only in R. Only in R. So, uh, we can do it through some dedicated L packages, like Shiny package for responsive programming, like uh, ggplot2 package for static plots, like ggbs package for interactive plots. Uh, and uh, we, can, we can also host uh, RStudio Shiny servers on our own uh, dedicated servers. So the open source version is also available. And in our case study, uh, we, you can see uh, uh, that simple application we call it the phone, an interactive web application created totally in R. We have some cartograms uh, of different administration units, some visualization of trends in time series, some um, KPIs. We even utilize the real users' go location within this uh, application. And what is uh, interesting also for me that this application uh, works uh, also uh, on a mobile device and you can check it by yourself uh, through Google. It needs a lot of refinement, but it works. Uh, and uh, some pros and cons of using though, that R ecosystem. So uh, the main advantage is that we only need one language, uh, programming statistical language to master, and it's completely free. The disadvantage uh, that you can see that this uh, R language is not uh, very easy to learn. So this, uh, it has some st steep learning curve uh, and it needs uh, a lot of time and effort to, uh, to be invested to uh, to utilize this language uh, completely and fully. And uh, to sum it up, some postulates from open data perspective from, from uh, our experience. So, uh, more open data should be accessible via application programming interfaces, or at least stored in tidy data frames in cells uh, e files. Some metadata of open data sets should be uh, standardized as possible to allow easy matching operation on data sets uh, from different sources. And if it, it's possible to separate it from the main data files for easy automatic updates checking that in data sets. Uh, and access to different open data sets for different application programming interface should be uh, somehow unified, for example, by de developing wrapper functions in L packages. What I mean here that uh, I don't want to uh, use 10 different packages, 10 different uh, IT tools to access 10 different APIs uh, to pull 10 different data sets, but I uh, would like to use one air package to, uh, to do all that. And uh, we need also a further implementation of great graph data formats and more, and more effective data search engine, especially in social sciences, because it is relatively 
much easier to work with uh, a data set when we uh, know uh, where to look for it than we don't. And uh, all of that will allow us uh, to easier access to open data, open research data, and we'll add, uh, therefore it will uh, let us in the future to do more complex reproducible analysis and faster build new data products. And uh, that's all. If you can test this uh, exemplary ap application, you can do it by yourself and tell me what uh, you think about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So any questions for me? Um, have you considered writing some business analysis and specification for APIs that you could introduce to the government? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> That's a simple answer. Uh, I, I understand and I realize that uh, there is a lot of work to do. Uh, and we are at the beginning of the process. Uh, and I don't want to undermine all, that, uh, all of that work that has been done so far. But we still need to work it. Of course, uh, I will try to help, but uh, I don't have a very simple solution for all the problems. Thank you.